Hello YouTubers, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing my own review of the D8BT. And you know I want to do this review is because most other people who are doing it, they could be mechanic, but everybody has their own different opinions. So today this is going to be my own opinion about the D8BT. Now the BT stands for Bluetooth. Now the D8 is the version. I have actually done a lot of core research before buying this scanner. And so my own review is going to be from both how the uh, the functionalities as much as how it communicates with cars. It's going to be in that detailed review to give you guys exactly what this is. This company actually contacted me to their sales story previously concerning reviewing one of their products. But they actually disqualified me because I'm not in the US. I'm not uh, based in the US. And well, I lost that opportunity right there, but I finally got to get one myself, and it's not cheap. But compared to the features they have, it's the cheapest with the better performance compared to some other ones which you see out there like Altel, Snap-on. So I'm going to prefer this to Altel and Snap-on. I still prefer the product, maybe the D9 or the D10, whatever ones that have more advanced uh, uh, programming capabilities but what I saw in this one yesterday it was massive and so I'm gonna be going into reviewing this guy so first and first let me switch up the camera right there and if you come in here for the first time go ahead and subscribe I'm not reviewing this based on because I'm trying to make you buy no I'm trying to give you things you need to look out for there are specific expectations right which I am actually having in mind before actually trying to buy this guy and I'm gonna try to find out if it actually have that capability. And that is something which most scan tools out there would not have. And those that have it, they are extremely expensive. They are on the high side. So with this, I wanna actually upgrade my own level of scanning and job on automotive and going to program keys and all that code ECU because there is a job I have previously that I couldn't actually be able to do it myself. That is coding area sum and with the whole lot I read about this, if what they said is true, then this is my ideal kind of tool, affordable and really not that affordable though. Because down here in Nigeria, you have to really have eaten enough from mechanic before you can, I mean from fixing car before you can actually put the money into doing this, buying this one. So let's go to it. So I'm gonna flip the camera and start unpacking it and let's see what is inside it. Then I start telling you some of the things which uh, you need to look out for okay here we go so the first thing first is okay, open it through this guy here all right that's what it should looks like that's it now there are some important details which you need to look at here like the serial number for your own and uh, I'm off with this guy here now this is the real guy we're up for from Shenzhen X2 Tech Intelligent Company Limited. So, Smart Diagnostics. Now let's go ahead and, first of all, I'm gonna say the case is very, die, it's like a die hard case, really solid. That is the first impression there. Now, go ahead and open it, and here we go. Okay, that's cool. Now, I'm not disappointed in any way. This is more like uh, what uh, the hotel did in some of theirs with a nice foam padding to keep it from any some sort of uh, shaking and uh, vibration that's going to affect anything. So first we have the UK or okay this is US typical you know you know why this is like that so you can be able to put the key here to save uh, to prevent children from going to plug this in. So it comes with two cords the normal UK type and normal US so should you decide to choose and it's actually with adapter so with this it means when you're actually working on a car you won't need to plug it on your car to be able to work with it so that is one little flaw there but it's not totally bad though if you're some kind of people who have constant power so it means you just need to plug this and it's go and it's rated 12 volts a 12 volt dc that this guy here emit out so I put that in place and the next one is a data cable that connects it to the computer or to some others you know it has two same kinds of a USB port kind of a head 
I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the next one is gonna be the dongle so I'm gonna put this guy back in place but on the other second side there they look really solid it's not looking like the Chinese made stuff though so this is quality and the front part like I said where the kind of uh, got it from any vibration through when it's transported is another thing which is cool now here this guy here looks cool this is a dongle and there is something impressive about this very dongle here unlike other ones I've come across it has a touch so should you are trying to troubleshoot a car in the night you can press this it has a flashlight to actually find where you are trying to plug it so that's a pretty much cool feature right there it looks quite heavy and that's that's another thing so let me go ahead and get this guy on okay well better so that it will not go up and down okay and that's what it looks like okay it has a stand where you can actually pull it from here and stand it if suppose you're walking on a car so it's uh, on its own okay that's good really really stodgy now it also have a VGA plug so if you decided that you don't want to use the Bluetooth because this is actually the BT I talked about you can plug it in here and that's the charger connection point and that's the data communication and that's the power button here and aside that it come with manual for it and uh, a card which has the product uh, name serial number and activation code so this activation code is what you use to activate it i've actually activated mine and uh the date of the very day uh year which you bought it's going to be inscribed there and this is the user manual this user manual contains pretty much some stuffs and this is what is going to come with to show exactly what the package comes with when you bought one so i'm gonna put this back in place and uh let's go over there Aside that, not anymore. So first and first, I'm gonna press this down button here, and she power up. It's powering up. You can see right there. Okay. Okay, you see it loading up right there. Now, you might be like. Wow, why is it uh, acting like as if it's having the RPMs revving up and down? But that's how they did it. So, got to load gasoline and next initializing. Please wait. So, I'm going to be using my Volkswagen Jetta. This is the interface. Okay. Now, that's a good one there. I'm going to show you guys more information. Made in China. You can see the model right there. Okay. And it has a camera at the back too. Now on this very first interface here, on the top left corner, you have the special function, you have DTC report, you have remote service, and you have auto scan. You have auto scan here, you have diagnostics. There are two different things. And you have update here. Suppose there is any update. By the way, it comes with three years free update. After then, after that, then you can start to pay for update. I haven't actually checked how much, but the last time I checked. It is way cheaper compared to that of Alta. That's why I decided to go for this. Have the settings here and more. Now, on the interface, there is something very cool which I found here. An intuitive features which every technician while working on a car needed. Let me lower this camera a little bit. Okay. The intuitive features which you have here that I found very interesting is like a cutting edge technology, which uh, they incorporated in order to assist you to solve problems. First of all, in the top left corner, is the technical support which they can actually offer you when you're trying to fix a car problem that is uh, more hectic or that is above your own scope of diagnostics. So lifetime support, that's a very good one. Now the next one here is on the top, top down corner. You can control the volume and you can take a screenshot without even having to go inside or whatsoever. Then you have the volume down button, you have the back button right there, then you have the minimize, you have the home, right? Okay, you can see right there. Then you have the screenshot, you can take a screenshot. Then you have the Bluetooth. This Bluetooth, you can just tap it and it connects to the car instantly. 
and you have the button, the shortcut button for the diagnosis, suppose you lost your way. Because as soon as you tap this home, you start searching for it. Although if you are very familiar with Android, you can come up here and type the diagnosis and get it there. But the left is shortcut here, which is a very good thing. Then the last feature there, which is very good, is a screen recorder to actually, you know, help some people who are knowing where you're touching while you're making a tutorial, right? So that's a very good one right there. I really applauded them for that. So the next phase you're gonna be going to is connecting this device with a car and let's go on. Now, the first thing first before you start going is to go and update, look for update. There are a lot of updates right here. So you wanna choose the one that is available for your owner and stop burning data. And like here, you will hardly find Lincoln in Nigeria or Roy or Lifang, Dishatu, GMC, you find them, but it's often minivan. Euro, Ford, you have US here, Cadillac, Transporter, Aston Martins. You will see those here, Proton, GM, right? But they are rare. Jack, MG, so Saab, Jinkane, and the rest of them. So what you often find here is Toyota, Hyundai. So that's what I'm going to be updating if I were you. So you hit the update button here and swipe down, right? So as you swipe down here, you should be able to find the Wi-Fi. You can see it right there. It's connected already. You can tap it off and on and connect it. So you go ahead and hit the update and it should start updating. Other more, you also have a flashlight. Suppose uh, you're walking in the dark and uh, you need light, you need light to see through places. That's good one. That's why I said it's have a cutting edge technology. You can the light shine, the touch shining there. You can shut it down. And our story has 10,000 mAh battery. So let me go ahead and look at it and see what happens there. But I can be able to check that right now. But I know pretty much it's looking stodgy and heavy. So let me go back. Now it's up for us to go ahead and test it out inside the car and see how it connects, how fast it does that. So quickly. Okay, I'm gonna be using my Jetta here to test it. I know it has some certain problems. So let's see how fast it's gonna communicate with the with the Jetta. Okay, here is where the port is. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and connect it. You can see the red light shines as soon as you connect with your you pair up with the with the device here which i want to put down here let us lay down here a little bit for a while you can see automatically as soon as the bluetooth is connected this thing is super fast before i could even say a hey, the bluetooth has connected so i'm gonna go ahead and take on my key and put on ignition Put the ignition on. Now let's go ahead. We have a couple of problems right there showing red. My steering, power steering, and airbag. Let's see how far we can be able to see through that airbag light and see how far we can be able to solve a problem with it. But that's one of the cool things there. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to diagnostics and scroll all the way down. Europe. Okay. Volkswagen. You have so many cars guys that's something which i've never told you guys so many covers many vehicle coverages so uh further before we go into diagnostics i want to go ahead and let's take a look at the special functions and see what i have right there so pause okay this is the special function right here so i have oil reset light i have throttle throttle body adaptation i have electronic parking brake i have steering assisted i have key programming instrument cluster gearbox matching battery matching battery reset, injector coating, di uh, diesel particulate filter, gearbox lining, TPMS reset, power balance, language, transport mode, there's a whole lot. Rain, light sensor, transmission reset, battery, high volt battery, FRM, uh, FRM reset. I haven't actually known this feature, but uh, it's something which I need to go through. Tire upgrade, headlight, electronic pump activation, suspension seats, EEPROM. Wow, that is... That one really got me. ECU configuration, that's the ECU coding right there. Then controlling unit reset. Should you need to reset your gear, uh, transmission system or ECU is added, finger tape. ABS bleeding, speed limit, so you can actually set the speed limit to the car. Clutch adaptation, stop and start, EGR relearn, AC relearn, SRS window initialization. This is uh, gonna be very useful for most Toyotas because they have a lot of window issues. 
VGT Railern. I think that should be like a car. It looks like a turbo airbag. Now, this vehicle has airbag uh, yellow light. If it's yellow, it means it's just a warning light. But if it is red, it means it's not gonna activate when there is an impact. So, safety restraint system. So it has a lot of special function. Seriously, so that's why uh, my research didn't put me in any way. I'm not disappointed. So you can choose to do diagnostics or go auto scan. But let me go through here first and go down to VW. Let's see how fast it connect. Okay, it says you open the hood last. You suppose uh, it's a lower mode L that you can detect automatically. So I'm gonna say automatic detection, manual selection, system selection. I'm gonna go automatic detection. Okay, now uh, say Golf Jetta. So this is Jetta. So I'm gonna click it, and right away, boom! It detected it. 2007. I'm gonna hit OK. Now we have a whole lot here. A lot of people were asking, does it come with topology? Topology? Well, yes. It is not a mistake. And uh, if you wanna actually find that out, so you can go through automatic scan right here and look at it doing its own thing there really, really fast, which is cool feature, right? But that is not why I'm here. I'm here to actually, yes, it's part of why I'm here. Sorry to say that because I'm here to review the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it first. Go ahead and pause it. It's very fast in communicating, guys. That's one thing which I've noticed. So I'm going to go back. Yes. So let me go through. Uh, let me go through full system diagnostics. Yes. So you can harness. You can check any of the module which you want to deal with. So let's go through the airbag and see how far we can be able to solve the airbag problem. Read trouble code, guys, is really fast. I mean, like, seriously, you are saying it yourself. So here we have active static airbag, passenger side, upper limit seated. So which is the passenger side airbag? This guy here, that's the guy right there. So technically speaking this uh, this airbag have an issue but sometimes it could be just an error code and if it is an error code just a uh, a random error code if you clear it it shouldn't come out and the yellow light should disappear so let's go ahead and clear the trouble code yes okay the vehicle just responded but one way to find out is if the yellow airbag light goes off and what happens it didn't go off so which means that problem there is static so let's go ahead and read the error code again and see if it is there it's there so which means there is a problem right there and uh, it will not deploy when there is a problem even despite the fact that it's not showing red now let's go back you can do attrition testing on this guide but you can actually do okay Operating testing of the airbag may cause the airbag trouble light to turn on or the airbag protection will be activated So let's say okay Press to start What's the worst thing that could actually happen? Okay, crash barrier seat belt tension exceeded active with The vehicle just responded You see the two light flashing a whole lot different light even in the down light was slashing so let me go ahead and stop it and okay I still have the two light flashing uh, let's go through adaptation come on channel number now you guys gotta be very very careful whatever you do here because you can create a problem and you can solve a problem okay now let's go further again this time want to check through the engine control module there's a specific feature which I'm seeing here, which I needed to. Uh, I was told that this very scanner can be able to upgrade, can be able to update the firmware of the car. But I haven't seen that option. Maybe I have to write to the company, I have to email them personally. So first of all, let me go through the display advance. 
Okay. Okay, flush date is not available. Flushing to code 000. Require conditions, 00 programming, justice number, programming attempt, zero. Okay. So let me read her freeze frame data, lost communication with the starting column, which is absolutely. So this is cool. And for the O2 sensors, bank one, sensor one, that is absolutely, well, that's cool. Seriously cool. So what else do you want to read, guys? Let's go ahead and check uh, the live stream data. But one thing about the live stream data of, uh, okay, I forgot to tell you that when it started communicating, the green light will start flashing, right? There are a whole lot. You can see the coolant temperature sensor is uh, st settling at 31 degrees right there. So this is gorgeous, guys. Engine load is 12% because the car is not even starting. The intake manifold, the intake manifold pressure is 948 bars. Why? Because the car hasn't started. Okay. Engine speed, there is a whole lot. The battery voltage is 12.3, which is a good one. Coolant temperature, intake air temperature 27, that's good. Really, really good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> One thing I find very interesting here is that you're trying to find a live stream data for with uh, most other scanners, you might not be able to get it like this on a VW model. They're going to tell you to go through channel by channel and it's a whole lot of mess. So this scanner makes it very, very easy. You see the oil warning threshold, fuel consumption. Okay, let me go ahead and start a color see more for this guy. She's up. Fuel consumption signal, fuel loss equivalent. Now, the arrow which you can see here is actually the graph. So, if you put it right now, you should start seeing the graph right there. So, you have a graphing capability. There is much you can decide to zoom in and zoom out, depend on what you want. Engine load automatically changed from 12 to 21 percent. Throttle opening is 2.5, 2.3%. Ignition timing. This is lovely, you guys. You know, the live stream data give some sort of a versatile, versatile information that can help you know exactly where the problem is coming from because live stream data is another way which you can use to troubleshoot a problem. And I'm so happy I made this choice, guys. Really. The Chinese tech giant have made us proud, really. Serious. Now, the revolution per minute RPMs is 700. You can see it alternating right there. But there is no any rough idle. So I'm not expecting anything less from what I'm getting right here. Injection timing, 4.2 milliseconds. I think that's a little bit high. Uh, just a little bit because it's supposed to be around three mm. now the manifold pressure dropped intake manifold pressure dropped to 300 it was 900 previously so let's go ahead and give this car a little bit rev and see what happens throttle opening resistance is to 2.3 it's closing further allow restricting more air This is lovely, guys. Seriously. Okay. Altitude correction factor minus 40, minus 4.69. So, guys, I can't say anything less than what I've told you guys. So, for me, this is good. So, if you want to record, you go ahead and click here and it will start doing a live, you know, screen recording of whatever you're doing. So, that's why I say this is good. They incorporated exactly what the cutting edge technology into this very scan too. Now, we wanna check some other testing. Let me shut down the car. One other thing which I like about this guy here is this very two is ability to connect smoothly as soon as you shut off the key, the car 
for most scanners, when you off the engine and on it back, the scanner will take some time to actually reconnect. The interface will be disrupted, but this is good. That's why I said reviewing of the scan tool can actually be different, but there are some people who need to give you what you need to look out for. Now let's go back. I want to go ahead and do actuation testing. The actuation testing I want to do here is just a little actuation testing. Let me go ahead and check. Uh, let me check the. Okay. What do I want to do? Actuation testing. Actuation testing. The capability is actually to be able to test run. Some module even before going there, like if suppose the, the door is not responding or the window, the glass window is not winding down and you need to figure out if it is a relay problem, a motor problem or whatsoever. So you can actually do actuation testing. So let's start with the driver's door, right? So let's go to the driver's door. Okay. Actuation testing. Okay. Okay. Lighting. And the light is, uh, where the hell is that light? I want to find it and know what I'm actuating. Here, it's not a park light. It's not. This situation is not smooth. It's supposed to give you arrays of information. If it is door, you want to check. If it is window, because it's simply like uh, testing this, the possibility, what you have here and this switch here to be able to test it from the computer here. It's supposed to bring it out as... Okay, ch checking the central locking module. Activate. You just heard that. Status unlocked. You can stop it. You heard it again. So you can decide to end it. So that's 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 good. Uh, end it and it goes back. Let's go ahead and do further actuation testing. I'm expecting to have a whole lot of different uh, way of assessing them here. So you can decide to choose what you want to actuate. Okay. That's it. Move to the next. Testing the mirror function. Oh, that's good. Let me check the mirror. Wow. Now, the reason why I want to actuate uh, test the mirror is because the mirror, okay, the turning signal. Let's see. Activate the turn signal. The turning signal lamp. Okay. Just been activated. So it's good. Okay, now let's get to the next one. Peripheral lighting. I don't even know what a peripheral lowering window regulator. Let's activate. That's good. And it's specific on the driver's door. So everything is doing is just within the side. Now I just actuated this guy here. My mirror is bad. And that is how you need to find out. Uh, just actuated it again and it takes it up. So let me move on to the next one here. Okay, so finally this is the end. Okay, so guys, this is lovely, right? Really lovely in my own opinion. Now let's get to the... Okay. Well, I don't want to mess with anything right there. So guys... They have ECU configurations, that's the coding. Have expert mode and normal mode. Should you choose whichever one you want? And most of the times it stores the report even without. So it has a whole lot, guys. Seriously. Asia. You're seeing those red light there because I updated this just a day ago. Australia. So that was really good guys and uh, i didn't even take time to find out which car it doesn't cover but i know it covers a whole lot a whole lot guys so guys i hope you find this very helpful this uh in-depth review which i gave on the d8 so if you find it helpful give this video a thumbs up i actually did this so you can be able to make your own decision should you choose to buy it as a diy or as a mechanic it suit the both purpose and uh, I can't say anything like it's about six hundred and ninety nine. That's seven hundred dollars right there. In my own verdict, 
I don't see it deemed unfit for the purpose which it is. And I'm not disappointed. I put my money on this to be able to give my customers the best in terms of troubleshooting and finding problems regardless. So guys, I remain Dr. Quota Fix. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. If you have any further question or any further testing you want me to do, drop it in the comment section below. Be sure you are my subscriber before asking me any personalized question concerning the D8X2. And I'm going to answer it truthfully and honestly as best possible as I can. Stay tuned. I remain Dr. Cool. I'll see you next. Bye for now.